Okay, so let's talk about Alatrian. I love this fight. It's my favorite fight in the game by far now. But I've been debating for a few weeks now whether I should make a guide for him or not. And the reason is, like on Kovtaroth, Bo has been murdered by Capcom on this fight. It's one of the worst weapons for this fight, and the damage is pretty bad, so if you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna be struggling on this fight. But the fight is so well designed, and the moveset is so good and so fair, that for me it's by far the best monster in the game. Okay, let's start because it's going to be a long one. I divided this guide in 5 parts. The first part is going to be covering the basics of the fight. The second part we're gonna talk about what part to focus and why. The third part is going to be talking about the strategy of the fight. Then the fourth part is going to be how to keep the part tenderized. And then finally, in the last part, we're going to be talking about his moveset. So let's start with the basics. A bunch of these informations you probably already know, and they can be applied for bow or any other weapons. First, Alatrian will either be starting in fire mode or ice mode. In the event quest the evening star and the special assignment, it will start in fire mode, and in the quest dawn of the death star, it will be in ice mode. I will show builds for both of them in part 3, but basically you want to get it in fire bow for the ice quest, and you want to get an ice bow for the fire quest. No matter what element is tasked with, after a certain time, it's going to turn into dragon mode. No, this is where Bo really starts to struggle. In dragon mode, all the elemental damage that you deal to him is going to be cut in half. So your damage really goes down by a lot during dragon mode. After some time in dragon mode, he's going to be doing his big move, the Escadron. The damage that this move does to you depends on how many times you were able to topple him before this move. Thankfully, Bo is pretty good at dealing elemental damage, so even if the damage is not really good, you should be able to get topples pretty easily. Now one more thing, when he turns dragon mode, that's the only time that you can actually break the horns. All the damage that you do to the horns before he turns dragon does not count as part break damage, so dragon is really the only time that you can break the horns. So breaking the horns is crucial because if you do break the horns, after Eskaton, it will go back to its initial element. But if you don't break the horns, it will go to this opposite element, which is really bad because it will be matching your bow element and you will be doing almost no damage. One question that I've been asked a lot is, what part should I be focusing and why? If you look at bow runs, some of them go for the head, some of them go for the back legs, and some of them go for the front legs, so what is best? To understand what part is best, let's take a look at the hit zone values. The three parts that we're going to consider are the arms, the legs, and the head. The head has the highest row hit zone value, but the lowest element. The arms have the highest element value, but the lowest row and the legs is an average of both. Confusing, isn't it? Well, there's more. When he turns dragon, all of his elemental hit zone values are cut in half. So the raw part of your damage in dragon is actually way bigger than the elemental part of your damage. So what are the pros and cons of going for each part? Well, first of all, during elemental, the damage is going to be very similar no matter what part you focus. So let's start with the arms. The biggest pros of the arms is that it takes the most elemental damage, which means that you'll get the topples the easiest and the fastest by going for the arms. Now the negatives of going for the arms is that it's, it's a part that's really hard to hit because it's very small and it tends to move them a lot. It's also a part that is more difficult to tenderize than the head. And finally, since most of your damage comes from the elements, when Alatrion turns dragon, your damage is really going to be suffering if you go for the arms. Now the legs are very similar to the arms. You'll get topples slower than if you focus the arms, but still faster than if you focus the head. 
The legs are also a bit easier to hit than the arms, and the damage in Dragon is also not as bad. However, it's also a part that is hard to keep tenderized. And finally, the head. One of the benefits of the head is that it's easier to tenderize. When Alachion is not enraged, you can clutch to the head and start doing the three slap claw attack combo. It is especially useful at the beginning of the fight to get the initial tenderize. Another benefit is that during Dragon, since this part has the highest roll, you still keep the best damage out of all three parts on the head. Also, since Alatrion is always facing you, it's much easier to go for the head than trying to chase the limbs. One drawback of the head, of course, is that it will take more time to get the topples. So what do I recommend? For me, in solo, it's a no-brainer, you should go for the head 100%. The only drawback is that you'll get the topples a little bit slower. It doesn't really matter though because you'll get the same amount of topple going for the head or the limbs, it's just that you'll get them a little bit later. On top of that, if you go for the limbs, you need to have Creed Eye 7 instead of Witness Exploit 3 because the legs and the arms do not proc Witness Exploit. That means that the build that you're going to use for the legs and the arms is going to be a lot tighter than the build that you use for the head. Now there is an argument in online and multiplayer to go for the back legs. It is because in multiplayer, Alatrion tends to die faster and going for the back legs can net you one extra topple than if you were going for the head only. On top of that, if Alatrion is facing away from you, you can still focus the legs no matter what. For me personally, I still go for the head whether it's solo or multiplayer, but if you want to go for the back legs in multiplayer, it's a totally viable strategy. One thing that I love about Alatrion is that the fight is completely scripted. That means that if you know the fight and you know what's going to happen, you're going to be having very consistent times. I'm going to show you the strategy that I use against Alatrion and that's been working very good for me. First of all, you want to enrage Alatrion right away. He takes 20% more damage when he's enraged. So clutch to the head, do 3 slaps and a claw attack. The head is tenderized, Alatrion is enraged. That's, that's how you start the fight. Your goal during the elemental phase, of course, is to do as much damage as possible, but mostly is to get as many topples as you can. Because when Alatrion is in dragon phase, it's going to be way harder to get topples. My goal if I play solo is to get 3 topples before he turns dragon. It's pretty tight, so try to get at least 2. If you play online, try to get at least 1 before he turns dragon, and 2 would be even better. One thing that can help you is to get a KO. If you're solo, you can do 2 arc shots on the first topple, and then 2 arc shots on the second one, and this will get you a KO right away. If you're a multiplayer though, don't bother with arc shots, it will take way too many arc shots to be useful. So just put impact mental and try to get a KO that way. Now for those of you that don't know, Alatrion's flight is scripted as well. It will fly once during elemental phase and once during dragon. During the elemental phase, he usually flies at around 3 minutes. And the thing is, there's two triggers for Alatrion to turn into dragon. The first one is time based, so we will turn into dragon at around 3.5-4 minutes. And the second one is HP based, when it's 55% HP. And the reason I'm telling you this is because if you're able to get Alatrion to 55% HP and turn dragon before it flies in elemental, you will actually skip the flight in elemental. So, if you're efficient, you can prevent him from flying in elemental completely. Now, if you cannot prevent him from flying, there's a few things you can do. The first one is, if he's close to an elemental topple, you can try to proc it and dunk him that way. The second way is, usually when he flies, it's shortly before he loses the enraged status. So you can wait a few seconds, get a stone on the floor, clutch to his head, and trying to flinch shot him when he's not enraged to dunk him on the ground. 
And the third way to dunk him on the elemental fly is to use CC. So either paralysis or sleep. But usually I like to keep the CC for the fly in the dragon phase. So now I'll let you unturn dragon. Your first goal is to break the holes. If you focus the head, it's going to happen naturally. Shortly after this, he's going to do his dragon mode fly. Usually at this time, he is still enraged. That means that the flinch shot or the flash are not going to work. And since he's in dragon mode, it's very unlikely that you're going to get an elemental top hole during the flight. That's why for the dragon flight, I keep CC. So usually I like to paralyze, but sleep works as well. Now the next big thing is going to be the escaton. So the escaton is going to happen either when it's at 20% health or if enough time has passed. As long as you get one topo, you can out heal the Nova by just healing yourself. If you get more than one topo, the Nova will do even less damage. After this, it's back to phase one, where he's in elemental form, and then he's going to fly once, turn dragon, fly once, and then do another escaton. Just be mindful that after escaton, the flight and the dragon switch is faster, so it's going to happen much faster than in the beginning of the fight. Okay, so before we move on to the next phase, I'm going to show you the build that I use for our train. And keep in mind that if you want to modify those builds, uh, feel free to do so. That's just the ones that I've been using personally. I use Constitution 4 to not have to drink dash juice multiple times during the fight. And I have my paracoding jewel in my impact metal that I equip just before it flies in dragon phase. Okay, let's talk about tenderizing. I attributed a whole part of this guy to tenderizing because it is a big issue. It is crucial that you keep the head or the part that you're focusing tenderized at all time because if you don't, you're gonna lose on a lot of damage. But if you only count on the claggers to refresh the tenderize, it's never gonna work. It's always gonna run out. Thankfully, with this moveset, there is a lot of opportunities to refresh the tenderize, and I'm gonna go through all of them. You need to do two claw attacks every 90 seconds to keep the head tenderized. It's hard to keep track of, but eventually you get used to it. So the first opportunity is at the end of a topple, so you want to wait as much as possible and do the tenderize attack as he's standing up. The animation of the handbrake is also long enough that you can safely do a claw attack. The Ice Breath also gives you a lot of time to tenderize safely. The Ice Fly is also a very good opportunity to tenderize the head. You can also tenderize on the three fire rings move, just make sure that you clutch early enough. Same goes for the Flamethrower, just make sure that you clutch close when you're behind his head so you don't get hit by the fire. You can also tenderize on the big thunder move. Just make sure that you claw after the thunder on his head is gone or you're going to be knocked over. When he turns dragon for the first time, he tends to be unenraged after. That's a great time to clutch claw the head and start turning him as soon as he's done with the animation. You can get a full tenderize with this, so it's very good. If he is enraged though, you still have time to do a claw attack right after the dragon explosion. As a matter of fact, you have time to do a clutch claw tenderize after each of his dragon attack. If you need to, when you paralyze him to drop him from the air, you can do a claw attack on the head to tenderize. And finally, after the escaton, you have way enough time to do a claw attack on the head. So as you can see, there is a lot of safe ways to keep him tenderized, so use them accordingly to not let go of the tenderize. And of course, when Fatalis drops in, this will be a lot easier with the claw changes. Okay, and to finish, I'm going to talk about his most dangerous moves and how to avoid them. I think his thunder moves are the most dangerous, so we're gonna start by looking at the thunder dots. This move has two variations. Either it starts close to him and goes upwards, or the other way around. The safe spots are the same though, 
if you stay at 45 degrees from his head, like on the clips you see on the video, you're gonna be safe either way, and then you can dash accordingly. Just make sure that you're not too far or too close to him, so you're not getting hit by the first wave. The next one is the Thunder Lines, so in this one it's gonna do three lines that are either gonna be vertical or horizontal. It's completely random. The way I avoid this move is that on the first two lines, I run away from him diagonally, and then on the last line, I walk back towards him, still in a diagonal direction. As long as you move diagonally, he's gonna miss you all the time. Also, and that goes for every Thunder moves, if you're stuck, you can iframe the thunder by rolling as it's going to hit you. So let's talk about his fire moves now. The first one is the three fire rings. So for this one, don't worry about getting hit by the fireball directly. Unless you're completely inside of his head, he's not gonna hit you with it. So step away from the middle ring and after it explodes, just dash back inside. Okay, so next up we have the flamethrower. This one, there's two ways to avoid it. If you're too far away, you'll have to dash through the flame. So it's a bit scary, but if you get the, if you get the timing right, it's pretty consistent. And the second way, if you're close enough, is just to dash behind his head so that the flamethrower just completely misses you. We're not gonna talk too much about the ice moves because I think they're all pretty easy to avoid. The only one I'm gonna talk about is the ice fly. So. For this one, what you want to do is do a spread before he starts flying, and as he flies, just clutch claw to his head and do a claw attack. It's a pretty bad move for Bo, and you can't do much with it, but unfortunately, you just have to live with it. So let's talk about his dragon explosions now. There's two variations of the dragon explosions. The first one is when he switched from elemental to dragon, and this one is pretty easy to avoid. So. If you're in front of him, the radius of the explosion is very, very small. So if you're in front of him, you're not gonna get it. If you are in the radius though, you have to dodge when his hands are slamming the ground. For his Nova, the timing is a bit different. You wanna dodge as he expands his wings. And for this one, the radius is a lot bigger. So even if you're in front of him, you have to dodge. The timing is the same for the one that he does when he's flying. You have to wait for him to extend his wings. Speaking of flying, there's one tip that I can give you when he's flying. You always want to be completely directly under him. That's the safest spot. That's how you avoid most of his dangerous attacks, like the 360 spin move. That's pretty much it for the guide, but this, if there's one general advice that I can give you, is that don't be greedy and don't overextend. Alatrion's moveset is very fair and very telegraphed. If you know it and you're consistent, you're not gonna get it. And once again, if you have questions, you can leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, guys.